Ah, uh, yes. It's that time of year again. As some of you know, I've been covering the death of games and what went wrong with them every year for, wow, four years now. Jeez, time flies. And this year, there are some tragic deaths to discuss. Deaths that are always disappointing, but a reality of the video game industry. Not every game that I discuss is unplayable, and some may even have a decent amount of fans still. But regardless, they are here because they are either dead or the trajectory is definitely leaning towards an early grave. So without further ado, sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and let's play that funky music. Shall we? Dead games. D E A D G A M E S. Dead games. D E A D G A M E S. Dead games. D E A D G A M E S. Dead games. Dead games. The extraction shooter genre felt like the next big thing in the shooter genre. Something to replace battle royales. And seeing as Tarkov is such a big success, the developers behind the Psycho Frontier, Jaeger, really tried to corner a part of that market. And the game was really cool. The art style was unique and gameplay was smooth, while also being simple enough to get people into the extraction shooter genre. However, on September 2023, the developers sunset the game, meaning that the servers no longer exist and the game is gone. So what happened? Well, the game was rather content light on launch, making it hard to not compare to Tarkov all the time. If you were a fan of Tarkov, there wouldn't really be a reason to stick with the cycle. And if you've never played Tarkov, then this game might appeal to you, but then you'll feel like there isn't that much to do or that the game felt repetitive after grinding for a bit. And seeing as it was a free to play game, they had to rely on selling battle passes, cosmetics, and other in-game items to stay afloat. And while some of the skins were cool, they never really felt worth Worth it. On top of that, the game was very grindy, which is part of the extraction shooter's appeal for some people, but for a game in its early access, it might have not seemed worth it to put in hours and hours on a game that isn't even fully finished. However, one of their biggest issues was the influx of cheaters, which most games have to deal with, but for the cycle, it was overwhelming, and it turned off a large number of players, since the stakes for dying in the cycle were so much higher than any regular shooter. Also, the main selling point about extraction shooters is the PvP elements integrated with the PvE, and if the people you run into are just a bunch of cheaters not willing to just talk or hang out, it will kill that entire aspect of the game easily. By the time Jaeger fixed the cheater problem, it was already too late as a majority of their player base moved on. In the end, the cycle couldn't compete with Tarkov, but it did at least help push the video game industry towards making more extraction shooters, with Marathon coming up in the horizon, and even Dr. Disrespect's game is also an extraction shooter. And who knows, it technically was in early access, so it could come back with a full release. But come on, it was out for over a year in early access. Developers just use that word as an excuse. <sighs> That's just the cycle of life, I suppose. Dead Games Shatterline was a class-based first-person shooter that was trying to compete with the Call of Duty-type games. And honestly, the gunplay and feel of the game was fantastic. The PvP elements shined, and the characters had really cool and unique designs, especially Orbit, who was my favorite character. So what happened? Well, for starters, it was up against a juggernaut, Call of Duty. Everybody wants to be the COD killer, but it's damn near impossible. And to be honest, the only thing that can kill COD is COD itself. So it was always going to be an uphill battle for Shatterline. And for being a class-based shooter, they had only eight operatives at launch. And as of April 2024, they have eight operatives still. It seems like a huge issue when your character shooter doesn't get any new characters. Also, their PvE elements were never fully realized. That whole aspect of the game felt empty and underdeveloped, with minimal replayability. And for a game with no budget, wasting resources on a pretty mid PvE element honestly wasn't a great idea. But the biggest issue by far is, unfortunately, things outside of Shatterline's control. You see, the developers Frag Lab were all located in Kiev, Ukraine during Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This unfortunately had immediate negative effects on the team out there, forcing them to evacuate and push back a lot of the progress towards updating the game. The game never received substantial updates nor pushed out any huge marketing pushes. Many people left the company, including people that I had come into contact with. Since I made a video on the game, I really enjoyed it and I was working towards a cool collab with Shatterline. But communication with Shatterline just completely disappeared for me around the same time that Russia invaded. Shatterline had a lot of potential, but it honestly never even had the chance to try. 
Dead Games. Apex Legends Mobile was Apex's attempt into the mobile game world. With the success of Call of Duty Mobile and Fortnite Mobile, Apex wanted to get in on the market. So how did it do? Well, we don't have exact numbers, but all signs were pointing towards the game doing okay. It wasn't lacking players and had pretty consistent updates. But regardless, the developers of the game, which isn't actually Respawn, it's like another company, they sunset the game last year, shutting it down completely. So what gives? For starters, the game decided to be its own thing versus being a part of the main Apex Legends game, which you can do, that's what Call of Duty Mobile does. However, one of Apex Legends' biggest competitors, Fortnite, allows crossplay between mobile players and everyone else in unranked matches. Apex Legends Mobile, on the other hand, was a completely different game, complete with their own progression, their own cosmetics, and even their own unique legends. So immediately, this alienated fans of the original game, since spending time playing the mobile game won't level up your main battle pass and won't unlock you new things that will transfer to your main account on PC or console. And I think that was the core issue and why they shut down the game. I think it was a mixture of confusion and splitting the player base that ultimately is why they canned it. And I do think that Apex Legends Mobile might come back in a new form as perhaps a way to finally play the game on your phone, complete with cross progression and cross play. I might be wrong, but it would make complete sense and I think would actually be a smart move from a business perspective as well, especially if on the day they launch the new mobile game, we see the return of the mobile exclusive legend, Fade. Imagine finally being able to play him on the main game. <sighs> A boy can dream. But until that day comes, Apex Mobile is no more. Dead games. I'm not going to spend too much time on Halo Infinite again, as I've discussed it last year in detail, and everything I said about why it died is still mostly true, but just know this. I apologize to all my fans. I made a video called The Redemption of Halo Infinite, where I claimed that this game was redeemed. Don't get me wrong, it did fix a lot of its issues, and it's still one of my favorite games, but regardless, the players aren't coming back, and it looks like 3 for 3 essentially is letting go of this game and moving on to other projects. So you know what? It's my turn now. Goodbye, Halo Infinite. I loved you so much. I put countless hours, countless dollars, my heart and soul went into this game. And all you ever brought me was disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Maybe the next Halo will actually launch completed, but Infinite really was finite. Dead games. Battlebit is probably my most controversial inclusion on this list, and I don't believe it's really fully dead at all, but more like dying. It had a really solid run, and at one point was on top of the world with almost 100,000 concurrent players. But now, its player base has dwindled to Halo Infinite levels. Ugh, so what happened? Honestly, I think other games finally just came out that people wanted to play, and they just moved on from Battlebit. Battlebit was a little bit more of a fad. It was fun while it lasted, but it really was more of a holdover game for most people. Fans of Battlefield, which is its main competitor, played it until Battlefield finally got its shit together. And now that game is actually doing okay according to the Steam charts. Pretty good numbers. Don't get me wrong though, Battlebit is still a solid game, and it will definitely have a player base until its final breath. The developers can rest easy knowing that they outsold Call of Duty at one point and were unquestionably a success. It's just that their time came and went. And that's okay. Games don't need to last forever to be successful. I think Battlebit will last a battle bit more, but mark my words, it won't be here in 2025. God, watch this just be so wrong. Dead games. This is our first ever game that died before being born. But I have to include it in this video because we were told that Overwatch 2 was being made to include a campaign PvE mode. Then they scrapped that and instead it would just be some PvE updates. And then they scrapped the PvE entirely. Now, I'm not an idiot. Overwatch 2 is far from a dead game. It has plenty of players and people who are fully dedicated to this game. But seeing the campaign PvE die before getting a chance to even try it and I know it exists out there because they showcased it before. So as a fan of this game, it sucks. It feels like the reason why they scrapped it was partially because Overwatch 2's PvP mode was just more profitable. But I also think that they figured out that they could just sell bits and pieces of the campaign that was scrapped as cool new updates whenever their player base would start to dwindle. And it gives players the illusion of a big update when in reality, these little elements would have all come at once with the release of Overwatch 2, like we were promised. Regardless of the reason why, there's not a single one that makes Blizzard look good. And it's honestly ridiculous to even call this game Overwatch 2. <sighs> I just wanted to save the world as a monkey. <laughs> oh well. Monsieur, 
Does this mean Overwatch is back? <laughs> no. And now, some honorable mentions. This game is 100% dead, but I already talked about why before when I talked about Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 1. So when they just decided to slap a 2 on it, I knew it wasn't gonna work. I think it's funny that the best way to explain my thoughts about this game is with a SpongeBob scene. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? A lot of people were telling me to cover the finals for this video, but the finals has a solid player base at the moment, and with a very unique game mode, it does have a chance to succeed, but time will tell if it ends up on next year's video or not. Personally, I hope not. X Defiant hasn't officially come out yet, so I do want to give it a chance when it actually does, but something tells me we'll see it here next year. But who knows, I've been wrong so many times. Okay, so I didn't know where to put non-multiplayer games, as it's clear that these games are meant to be played and then you move on. So you can't look at Steam charts for single-player games. But I do think that unlike past Bethesda games like Fallout and Skyrim, there was little to no replayability here. And it might be worth discussing. So I want to know. Let me know in the comments down below if you bought Starfield. And if so, did you beat the game? And if you did, did you ever replay it? I want to get a rough kind of gauge because a part of me kind of knows that it did not have the staying power as previous Bethesda titles. Okay, so there's also a new phenomenon happening in gaming right now that I'll call the squeak wool, where a game makes a return after being long gone, like in the grave, buried deep in the dirt. This is usually just another attempt to make their game a success, and it happened with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, and uh, we saw how that went. But it's happening right now with two other games. First, The Return of Gigantic, a game that died like five years ago, and Multiverses is coming back in May. I am rooting for these games, and and if it ends up working out for them, I think it would be worth covering in a whole new video called Games Reborn, What Went Right. But until that day comes, all we can do is wait. I just wanted to point out that it's been happening more recently, which is strange, but I welcome it. Dead games. And that's the dead games that I wanted to cover this year. If you didn't see a game here like Rogue Company, Hyperscape, Realm Royale, Splitgate, Multiverses, etc, etc, well, it's because I covered them all in my previous videos. So check those out. And if after watching all those videos, I still haven't covered a game that you want me to cover, please let me know which dead game I missed in the comments down below. And also, if you're a fan of any of these games that I covered today, let me know what you think caused their downfalls in the comments. I would love to hear more about it, especially from diehard fans. But with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.